everyone, Brooke Rogers here with the University Museums. Thanks for joining me on another virtual Family Sunday program. Today we are going to explore the elaborate and often colorful world of kimonos in our current exhibit at the Brunier Art Museum, Kantoku, Japan. Kimono are a traditional Japanese garment. As kimonos have been around since approximately 300 AD and is considered to be the national dress of Japan. The word kimono translates to a thing to wear on the shoulders, which is a perfect description as it is a roughly T-shaped front wrapped garment that is typically worn left over right and tied with an intricate fabric belt called an obi, along with other special accessories such as zori shoes and tabby socks to complete the full look. It is important to note within the category of kimono, there are many subcategories based on the materials, formality, length, and occasion worn. In fact, many contemporary wearers of kimonos take classes to learn the intricacies of kimono wearing and to avoid any fashion and social faux pas. Although kimono can indicate the wearer's age, gender, and marital status, Kimono usually all start off as a mostly rectangular piece of fabric cut from bolts that are about 15 to 17 inches in width and 41 feet in length. The cloth is used in its full width and only minimally cut to create the sleeves, body, neckband, and front overlap of the garment. Fabric content of the cloth varies with silk and cotton being the most prevalent, but can include modern fabrics such as polyester. Fabric construction also varies from simple repeating prints to luxurious brocades incorporating gold threads and embroideries. The eight kimono displayed in Contemplate Japan are generously on loan from the university's textile and clothing museum collection. Research and curation of the kimono selected from the textile and clothing museum is thanks to the caring hard work of Dr. Ellen McKenney, Janet Fitzpatrick, and Sophia Liu from Apparel, Events, and Hospitality Management with the College of Human Sciences. As I have learned from them, the kimono on display show a variety of fabric contents and constructions. What they have in common is a richness of visual symbolism. For every fan, flower, or leaf seen in a cloth, there is a rich cultural meaning behind it. Let's take a look closer at two of the kimono and see what we can learn. The first kimono that I'd like to share is one that I've had the wonderful chance of looking at for quite some time because my desk in the museum is right next to it. This kimono is from 1939 and is made from silk with hand-painted paste and stencil resist dye with gold embroidered accents. Although it might be hard to tell with our untrained eye, there's a lot we can tell about the wearer of this kimono. The style of this kimono is called a furisode and is distinguishable by its long sleeves and is known to be the most formal style of kimono worn by young women. Formality is indicated by its long sleeves. In fact, the longer the sleeve, the more formal the outfit for unmarried women. In addition to the length of the sleeve, we can tell this kimono would have been appropriate for a young woman to wear in all seasons due to the bright and complex colors used and the symbols woven into the fabric. To add to the formality, five family crests can be found along the chest and back. Other symbols on this kimono include flowers, specifically cherry blossoms, chrysanthemums, clematis, peony, and plum blossoms, pine needles, permission, grape and bamboo leaves, and objects like sensu fans and barbell-shaped hand drums called tazumi. Many of the symbols are believed to confer the wearer with good fortune and prosperity. One symbol that is heightened in Japanese culture through viewing parties are cherry blossoms. Cherry blossoms are revered as it has a brief blooming time and it has very fragile blossoms which helps to remind the Japanese that life is fleeting. This is the only kimono on display that features a cherry blossom, but cherry blossom imagery can be seen throughout the exhibit in our woodblock prints and the festival doll display. 
In contrast to the women's kimono, men's kimonos are far simpler. As we can see here in the men's kimono on display, that the gray silk damask kimono is covered with sensu fans and that its sleeves are unattached from the kimono with just a few unattached inches at the bottom. Unlike the previous women's style that had deep sleeves unattached from the body, men's sleeves are less deep than women's to accommodate the obi around the waist, whereas on a women's kimono, the long unattached bottom of the sleeve can hang over the obi without getting in the way. Unfortunately, we do not have a date associated with the creation of this kimono. However, in the modern era, the principal distinctions between men's kimonos are the fabric. The typical men's kimono is more subdued, usually featuring dark colors such as black, blue, green, and brown with matte fabric. We can tell this kimono is more casual because of its subtle fan pattern. In the previous Family Sunday video, I discussed the importance of fans in Japanese culture, so if you want to find out more information about sensu fans, I recommend checking out that video. Today, the vast majority of people in Japan wear Western clothing and everyday life, since the kimonos can be hard to wear as well as uncomfortable. It has, however, experienced a number of revivals in popularity over the decades, and is worn as a fashionable clothing item. Today, most Japanese are likely to wear a kimono to formal occasions such as weddings or funerals or even summer events. I wish I could show you how to make your very own kimono to wear. However, I do not have those skills. I do, however, know how to make an origami kimono. All you need to make an origami kimono is origami paper or paper that has been cut into a square, some scissors, and some patience. As you can see here, I have all my supplies set up, ready to go. I have my square piece of origami paper. One side is blue and has a fish pattern. The other is orange. The first step is just to fold the paper in half. Next, open the paper back up and then create quarters. So just fold those halves that you made in half again. And then we'll want to make sure both of those flaps are closed and then we'll flip over to the back side of the paper that shouldn't have any flaps on it. Then you'll take those folds that you just created and bring those to the original uh, crease that we had made. Basically, we're just creating a ridge along the back that will help us create a more full kimono. Next, we'll flip the paper over and then create a fold down the middle. Basically, we're just dividing this paper in half so we have a bottom of a kimono and the top of the kimono. And once we've folded it in half, we'll grab our scissors and then we'll just make two cuts on each side, making sure not to cut all the way across. The cuts we're making will help us make a bottom of the kimono. So we'll open that back up and then we'll determine which side we want to be the front and which side to the, be the back. And then we'll fold the bottom side. So we have our right done and now our left. And 
Now for the top part of the kimono, we're going to fold the first part down about two thirds of the way to help create the sleeves. We'll open this back up and then fold it about the quarter of the way up and this will help us to create a collar for the kimono. As you can see here, I have it on the back, we've created that collar part. And then this is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing. We're gonna open up the collar and to do that, you're gonna need to create kind of like a triangular fold. Um, it's You'll see a flap when you do it. And basically you'll just want to kind of help guide the paper to open up and at the end, it'll create a triangle. Now that we have our collar, to give it a better collar appearance, we'll just fold down a little corner on each side that gives a more round appearance. So our kimono is now done, but to complete the full look, we'll want to add an obi. So we'll just use a scrap piece of paper. Uh, my paper, as I mentioned, has a solid side and then a printed side. So I just used a scrap piece that I found folded it into quarters. And now I can slide that piece of paper through the kimono. Um, basically, I just added it to the back and then tuck the sides of the paper into the folds of the kimono. And just like that, you have your very own origami kimono. Thanks so much for joining me on this virtual family Sunday program on kimonos. I hope you learned a lot. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get our most recent updates on our videos. And of course, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Look forward to seeing you in the museum soon.